know, it's not every day you can take a kayak trip with your son, wind up shooting something like this. I mean, it's not even every day that I can, but the days you do, oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. If you never tried it, you guys gotta give it a try. Get out there, find somebody, I don't know, <laughs> who can shoot car or shoot scar, and give it a shot, it is so good. Big female, the male was with it. It took off. I thought it was a carp. Did you take the bait? Sometimes it's frozen up. That is beautiful on the inside of there, ain't it, son? Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper. Today I'm gonna be talking about eating trash fish. And this fish here is a gar. This is one of the ones a lot of people are gonna say is trash fish. But, interestingly enough, this is one of my favorite fish, actually it is my favorite fish to eat ever. I just shot this one with my bow and arrow down by the lake. Got some cool footage of that with my son. With all the rain lately, this lake is constantly changing. It wasn't too long ago, I was driving all the way up here and then under the bridge up there. Now that's probably 10, 12 feet of water. I see turtles out here and Went out last night, was able to shoot two gar. That's all I got. Met some bow fishermen. They managed to shoot one carp and one gar. That's all they got by the time they met up with us. But I'm thinking the best spot's gonna be way out there where Pinky Pepper and I went and where uh, Red Pepper and I went. So Monster Truck's here with me. With temps almost in the 80s and one day where it actually didn't rain today, that's, that's my best bet. If anything else is going on this carp season, it's gonna be something like that, I don't know. But we're gonna give it a try, right son? Yes, sir. Let's go give it a try. I love you, son! Behave! Looks like a soft shell turtle there. That is carp there. Hang on to this for a second. There's a couple of them there, it looks like. Do you think you can tie those off? Where's your rope? Okay, hold on. Get your rope out of your pocket. And we're gonna go through here. Oh, it's on the move. That's a big fish too. Is that a giant gar? That might be a giant gar, dude. It's, yeah, I think it's a big gar, dude. It definitely is. Oh no, I hit it. Ugh. Dude, it was two gar. Ugh. And I got one. The little one got away. Dude, this is probably the biggest gar I've ever shot. Can you see me? Yeah. Look at that hit. A big female, the male was with it. It took off. I thought it was a carp until I saw how pointy it was. Dude, son. And uh, right away, I just kind of cut its throat back to the point that it would not be swimming away. 
the tools I'm gonna use for this part of it. I'm just gonna show you the easiest way I know how to process this fish, how to cook this fish, and how to enjoy it. We love this. We actually shot uh, two last night. We ate them up today. This one, I just shot today. We'll probably eat it up tomorrow. Main tools I'm gonna need is these Weiss scissors. These things are amazing. If you don't have a pair, I highly recommend it. I got mine at Tractor Supply. I picked up about four or five pairs of them I have around. Um, I paid as little as like $7.99, as much as $14.99. So it just depends on what state you're in and uh, how much they are at the time, and then a fillet knife. But this fish has two beautiful boneless back straps, and that's the meat I'm after. First thing I'm gonna do is just cut across by the head, and we're just gonna take the head right off. Can you hear that? This head I'll actually use as a trophy. I'll put that up on my wall. Outside wall, but I'm gonna keep that because I think they're just super cool. And then if you look at the scales on this fish, you'll see there's a center scale right down the middle of the back. It looks different than the rest. I'm just gonna follow that with my scissors. They're pretty tough so you don't go a whole lot at a time, but the effort I put into this is worth the food I get out of it. Just following that center scale all the way down with these white scissors, snipping anywhere from a quarter inch to an inch each time. When I get to this little fin back here, I usually just snip that off. And just finish cutting up the back. Now I've got to cut down the entire edge of this, positioned right above the spine. On each side of the spine, there's gonna be a long tube of meat. That's what I'm looking for. You can see there's that cut line now. So I'm gonna carefully go in, both on each side of the uh, spine and then on the interior of the scales with my fillet knife. And what I'm doing is pretty much going and peeling back the meat from both the spine all the way down to the ribs and across and then across the inside, the inside of the scales as well. So I'm going to be following along on each side of that spine bone down to the rib cage and then I'm also going to be peeling off the inside of the scales and just peeling that meat away. I will add that the cut edges of these scales are very sharp. Wear gloves if you have to, but be careful. I could easily slice my fingers open along this cut line I made. Here's an example of how I've cut the flesh away. So you can see this is the scales. Here's that nice white flesh on the inside. It kind of reminds me of something like lobster, shrimp, crayfish. We don't eat any of those anymore, but if I was looking for a substitute, this could really be a good substitute. So this one here is a big female, which uh, was with a male. They were about to spawn. So she does have eggs, 
One thing I'll mention is, you know, eggs, roe, caviar from a lot of different species. Really tasty, good stuff. We've definitely eaten fish eggs before. However, the ones from the gar are poisonous. So I'm not gonna wanna eat the eggs from this one. I'll show you guys the progress here. Got it peeled off of the skin. You see how my hand slides in between there? There's meat still here. And then off that too. And here I've started to peel it off. So I'm just gonna kind of take that whole tube all the way off, all the way up. For my course of doing it, it seems it's, if I work from the back up, once I get to this point, it goes pretty easy. I can have this little piece to pull out and move out of the way as I trace the rest of the way down with my knife and just freeing it up. One thing I'll mention is a really sharp knife is going to help. Normally I sharpen one up first. I just had one of my children grab me one. There we go. So I'll sharpen it quick. That should be better. So I'm just peeling it again off the ribs and then off the uh, skin, off the inside of the scales and keep working it back. So for me, this represents half the meat I'm gonna get out of this fish. It's kind of like a, like a pretty thick 18 inch snake or something, but it's good, good meat, good fish. A little different than some of the other ones, but this is all I do. I cut the one out of each side of this, I give it a good rinse and I let it sit overnight in lemon juice. That's it for the cleaning process. It may seem a little tedious or like a little much if you've ever cleaned any fish, it's always a process. Um, butchering our own sheep, hunting our own deer, processing our own meat chickens, whatever it is, it's always a process. And there's always something involved, but what comes out of this is the driving factor that makes us really like even going through this. Couple minutes of work now, let it sit overnight, and then I'll show you what we do with the meat come the next day. This part here is rather simple. I get a gallon freezer bag, put lemon juice in there, maybe up to about a third of a cup. Put some of that in there, give this a good rinse. And I mean, that's a good cut of meat. Especially once you consider that's boneless. That's awesome. So make sure it's nice and clean and then put it in the freezer bag overnight. So I'll just kind of work that in, let that lemon juice soak on there and that'll be that. What I like to do with the gar, pretty much, you know, back straps then, is just throw them in the fridge overnight and a little bit of lemon juice. It's just a way of kind of seasoning that, flavoring a little bit. Then I'll just cut them into chunks, kind of like bite-sized chunks. Um, I think they're kind of similar to like a chicken nugget when you fry them up this way, only like with a real animal inside them. There's different ways to prepare them. This is just one simple, easy way. And if I only shoot a couple, which is normally all I can ever do, um, doing it from shore, not out in the, uh, boats or anything and then having limited uh, time and not really encountering large populations of them. I'll just take these, put them in overnight and cook them usually the following day. Zatarans is a good type of uh, fish fry mix. Other ones would be like shore lunch or stuff like that. I'll just put a little bit in a bag, put the uh, cut up pieces in there, give it a good shake and then put them into some hot oil. Use whatever oil you're comfortable with. Um, I'm gonna cut a couple of these real quick, show you about the size of them, drop them in here, and when this gets up to temp, get them sizzling. 
So I will point out the texture to this fish is a little different, but if you ever looked at them, they're a different looking fish. I take these long back straps we cut out and then put them into these little sections where you can get, you know, a good two, three bites out of them. Maybe just toss them right in your mouth if you're really hungry. But I will open up a bag of the Zatarain's fish fry, throw a couple of them in there, and then just give them a shake until they're good and coated, uh, coated. Sometimes you can get a little squeeze too, make sure they're getting coated. And then once this is up to temp, just add them in here and let them sizzle till about the time they stop. Normally, they're gonna be on the surface and you'll notice a difference in the sound between when they're actively sizzling and cooking and getting all like the water and moisture out and to then when they're done. So that'll be in a minute. I'm gonna pop a couple more in here. And this is absolutely, you know, my favorite fish to eat right now. It's amazing people call this trash fish, but uh, that's not how I view it at all. gave these about four minutes in there. I like using a scoop like this so when you get them out the excess oil can drip off back in the pan. We'll use that to fry up the next ones and then I put them on a paper towel and let that help suck some of the grease out of this. At this point they're still rather hot but boy are they beautiful. They're golden brown and I bet if I crack this open oh yeah see the meat's a little a little kind of chewy, but you can see it's nice and white inside there. It is, it's cooked. I'm gonna let these cool for a minute and then see what the little peppers think. I've tried a lot of fish. I've caught salmon before. I've caught different fish in the ocean before, sea trout, other stuff. I've caught trout inland. I've caught all sorts of panfish, bass, walleye, pike, other stuff. I've eaten tons of fish. There's a reason this is my favorite and part of it is just how it tastes and how much I like it. So we're gonna let these cool. I'm gonna get the rest of these going and then I'll uh, show you what the children think. All right, first round of children. Pick a little gar bite, nibble it up. Let me know what you honestly think. Remember, oh, she grabs a big one. Remember, this is trash fish to a lot of people. I liked it before. Mm. It's really good. Can really I good. give a little one to your sister? Bugger, you've eaten a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. How's this one taste? It's good. Mm. Girls? I like gar. I like gar. It tastes good. They I have. haven't had it for a while. I think I've only had it once. Yeah, I Twice. got a couple last year when I found out they were my favorite fish to eat. Mm -hmm. But what a presentation. Mm -hmm. I love them that way. And they're so much fun to get too. Mm -hmm. We gotta go kayak jug fishing soon. Mm -hmm. Like that, some day ago, my dog, I got it, and he took a shot, and I was like at the edge, but he didn't get it. Nope, you don't get them all. Yeah. Mmm. We just had some neighbors pass by and gave them each a piece. And that kind of explained to them like, I think of it almost like a chicken nugget type. Me do. Mm. Type food. And I say it definitely is. And uh, they definitely liked it too. But 
My favorite, for sure. What? Um, can I have another piece? Please? You may. Mm. What? You too? Mm. You may. And they go back for more, back for more, back for more. Can I have another piece? Another piece what? Please. Yes, you may. Then send in the mother little ones. Yes, sir. Oh, yum. What? I said, oh, yum. Oh, yum. What you know about eating gar, son? It tastes good. Show me. Show me. Show me. You think the bay? Sometimes it frozen up. That is beautiful on the inside of there, ain't it, son? Mm -hmm. Oh, what's that face for? Are you disappointed? No. Now you catch a lot of fish, you clean a lot of fish, you cook a lot of fish. How does this one rate? How do you like it out of all the fish out there? Probably better. <laughs> Probably better. Give it a try, girl. Bait. <laughs> what about you? You like that gar? Yes, sir. Aww, poor little guy doesn't have any more gar bite. <laughs> now what happens? Um, you would like another? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but they got. <laughs> oh, yum! Eat it up, Buttercup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that? What is that? I give you another one. Oh, you're just grabbing another one without even asking. You're not gonna leave the big ones for your mom and eat the little kid-sized ones. Kid-sized ones are, I don't know. They might uh, be she little. just needs more because she's a growing girl. <laughs> all right, if you don't eat all your gar, you can't shoot anymore. I know that. <laughs> So this people normally call trash fish. This is the gar papa cooked up today for us for lunch and I'm gonna try one and see how it tastes. Mm. That is super delicious. Mm. It's so like meaty and he soaked it in the lemon juice. It just gives it that great lemon flavor and then fried it with um, the Zatarain's fish fry. And it is so delicious, guys. Yeah. If you never tried it, you guys gotta give it a try. Get out there, find somebody, I don't know, <laughs> who can shoot car or shoot scar and give it a shot. It is so good. I just, I can't believe how good this is and people don't wanna eat it. I'm thankful that Papa was able to go out and shoot it and bring it on in. I'm super happy to have it and I, mean, I just can't believe, you know, like how much meat you even just get off just one. Like, this is all just one gar and it's such a treat, but it's so good. And I don't know where I'm going from there. <laughs> Talk about like the consistency or what it reminds you of or that. Oh yes. I mean, it's consistency is like, it's kind of like chicken. It's got some nice chew to it, and I mean, but I think it's even better than chicken nuggets. Garbites are like the next best, best thing, and I we know what's in here. It's it's 100% gar, and I mean, it's so much better. So, thanks, Papa, and thanks, guys, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.